Hi everyone. Good morning. You're all welcome to the third episode of Monday Morning Morning Series. We started this on the first Monday in February. And in February, the first Monday, we had Sheyi come to talk to us about um, how you can attract money. The second Monday, we had Paso P. Pressure, so she there could talk to us about why the rich are getting richer. And then today, we have a special guest who is going to join us soon, but I'll try to uh, hold myself. <laughs> My name is Lara Garuba. I'm a lawyer and um, I used to be a banker and a management consultant. I've done that for 18 years of my life. I have a um, community of women called Women Wealth and Wheels, where we teach women about money and how they can make money work for them. Okay, so you're in the right place. Thank you for joining early. Um, today is the third episode and our special guest today is Pastor Koju Uyimade. I'll be adding him shortly. So please invite your friends to join us as we start. Thank you everyone. Okay, so thank you. So I want you to prepare your questions ahead we already know what he's going to talk about so he'll be talking to us about money is spiritual so some people think it's true some people think it's false so we want to hear whether he think it's true or he thinks it is uh, false so whatever the case may be i believe that everybody will be impacted today and then we will learn from him okay i've sent him a request I am waiting for him to join us now. Okay. A welcome. Thank you for joining early. Thank you for joining us now. So at the Women Wealth and Wheels, we teach uh, basically financial literacy. Okay. Is unable to join. Okay, Pastor, if you are hearing me, I sent. Okay, I'm accepting your request. Good luck. Okay. Okay. I have accepted your request. All right. Come on. Pastor, good morning. How are you? Yeah. I don't even know how to behave this morning. <laughs> I'm super excited that you're able to make time out of your busy schedule. Thank you so much. Problem, Thank no you. problem. How are I, you? I'm fine. I remember a joke of a village man that went to the ATM after collecting money. He now frustrated that I said thank you. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just pardon me. If I do it. <laughs> I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, we started this morning series on 7th of um, February, and this is the third episode. Uh, Pastor will be talking to us about, okay, so there are different schools of thought. Some people believe that money is spiritual. Some people believe that it is not so we want to know whether pastors is saying true money is spiritual or false money is spiritual. I, uh, I, is someone I don't have to introduce, but for the benefit of those who are just missing him, I don't know where you have been all your life anyway, <laughs> for the benefit of those who are just meeting him, I'll just do a short profile. Pastor Koji is the senior pastor of Covenant Nation. The ministry was founded in 1994. He has spent over 25 years passionately serving by teaching biblical insight to believers um, in most practical way in life. He um, is the initiator of Platform Nigeria, Insight for Living, and Quantum Leap. He is also the host of Faith Seminar and the Warbeck Conference. I got to actually meet Pastor from 2007, I think, from Insight to Living on TV, Silver Bay. And then we started the thing with just so pastor. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much so for having me. Any time. 
So, Pastor, what do you think? Do you think money is spiritual? If you are saying, yes, it is, we want to hear your view. If you are saying it is not, we also want to know. Well, money is spiritual. And I will explain what I mean by it being spiritual. Um, being spiritual in the sense that, um, first of all, if the, if the scriptures say, just to start with this, you cannot serve God or mammon or the love of money is the root of all evil, then there has to be some spiritual connotation to money in itself. But the origin of money um, uh, makes us know that there is some there's a spiritual angle to it because it's not just paper. Uh, okay. It's the means through which um, value is exchanged. And because people go to work and the most substantial time they spend on this earth, they will spend working and the reward, one of the major reward systems for the work they put in is the monetary rewards that they receive for that good substantial part of their lives. So we cannot say that all of those hours that were spent at work, all right, and all those years that were spent at work um, has no spiritual undertone to it. So if we talk about it in terms of its spirituality, yes, money in itself, all right, is spiritual in the sense that um, there is a spiritual undertone to money, all right? It, it, doesn't mean money is, um, um, I, I don't want to misunderstand it. it. When I say spiritual, I mean, a person loving his wife is spiritual. A person raising children is spiritual. A person, those are spiritual activities. A person going to work every day is a spiritual activity. It's actually a spiritual activity. Um, it, it's, it's a way in which a person renders service unto God. So we look at spirituality in that light and say that money in itself is spiritual. Hmm. Because I, I think I picked something from your statement. You said the yeah. origin of money is of spiritual. I thought people say that, okay, we came into the world and then some group of people just after trade by battle and just say that money is the currency that we exchange, exchange for value. So when you now say spiritual, does it not... Um, Yes, you see, many people have been on spirituality in two different ways. For example, when man fell, when man fell in the garden as a result of sin, which was a very spiritual thing, what God said to man as a consequence for his sin is that in the sweat of your face shall you eat bread. So work and labor in itself is spiritual. And if money is the reward you get for the labor that you put in, so I said that money in itself all right, is a spiritual entity if we look at it that way. Oh, okay, 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 I get you now. So if we, okay, so the other school of thought that says that, uh, I think that is being misunderstood when people say that the love of money is the root of all evil. Is it the love, uh, that money itself is the root of all evil? So there are that extreme there are some extremists that say that, okay, if I'm serving God, I don't, I don't really need so much money. I just want to eat and then feed my family. If I go over that, that I'm not spiritual anymore. Right. Well, uh, I, if you look at rich people, if you look at poor people, I don't think there'll be a difference in love of money between the poor person and the spiritual person. Having it doesn't determine whether or not you love it or you don't love it. It's just like saying that um, because a person um, can't have access to a particular type of woman means that he doesn't like that person. It, the, the, that, I mean, it's love of money. A poor person can love money more than a rich person. When it talks about the love of money there, all right, in comparison here is you can't have God and mammon, all right, you will choose one. In other words, the love of money will be described as a person who reads. And if they and if it comes, that's why I said it's spiritual. If the Bible says love of money is the root of all evil, not some, all evil that you have on the earth came, comes as a result of the love of money. Where money actually represents something. Because as of the time where evil was on this earth, where Cain killed Abel, there was no money around. 
So if we are just defining money as the love of that paper, then what was the root of the evil that was in Cain or the root of the evil, all right, that was that existed before money actually came into operation. So when he says the love of money, he's talking about something that we now we have now just like how they still trade by butter and people so we've equated all of human labor and the reward system for that labor there as money. So money therefore determines your influence in society. Money determines many, many, many things. So is the love of that which money in itself will produce in that particular way that becomes all right the root of all evil. But when we talk about the love of money, it doesn't mean a person who, who I mean, Abraham was very rich in silver and gold, but Abraham did not, all right, have the love of money. Um, um, I mean, there were people, I think, they were rich in silver and gold, but there was no love of money there because they were not going to compromise their values in God for the sake of money. So a person who loves money is that you are willing to compromise your God-given values in order to access money. So you have rated money there above your love for God. That is the root of the evil there. But, all right, a person can have money in large quantities, and they will tell you that they will not compromise anything that, all right, tells them that this is their faith, right, in order to access money or to access more of that particular or more of money there. So when we talk about the love of money there, so you can have people that don't, that don't have money in large quantities and because of their love for money, they are compromising themselves every day in order to have access to money. But they don't even have money in large sums. And the people that have large sums of money would say we will not get into that because we're not compromising our values for that so the love of money has nothing to do very little to do with whether it is present or absent all right yeah. it's it's an attachment that you put to money yeah thank you Pastor. i got that i have two questions already so i want to just read it out before you go someone says that yeah. um Todd says that not everyone is supposed to be rich that not everyone is supposed to be rich. Do you do you agree with that or you disagree with that? Okay, let me say this. Being rich is a decision that you make. So not everybody will decide to be rich. So it's it's your decision. It's not um I don't think that God in heaven forbids anybody all right from being rich if they so choose and desire and they're not willing to compromise any of their values for that but i also don't think that it is written anywhere that some people are going to be rich and some people are going to be poor and there's nothing they can do to change the dynamics of their lives because once you state 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 that then what you are saying is god has already created a class all right, that your work, your labor, your integrity, your giving, your wisdom cannot change. Okay? But nobody should be criticized for not being, I mean, to say, okay, you're not rich, you're not, but it's a decision. People should know that I can make up my mind that I want to be wealthy. And when I say wealthy here, I don't want finances to be an issue, all right, in my life in terms of accomplishing anything that I believe I should do on this earth. I will always have, as it says in Second Corinthians, sufficiency in all things, require no human aid or assistance at any given time. I can, all right, donate to every uh, charitable work. If what is said in Second Corinthians chapter 9 is not a description of being rich, then fine. But if it's a description of being rich, then that scripture should be fulfilled in the life of everybody, that God will cause all grace to abound towards you, giving you sufficiency in all things, and you having it, all right, will be able to abound to every charitable donation. And it's my own firm belief that it should be the... Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. You are more useful 
if 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 you have sufficiency, I'm not saying that you are um, excessive about it, but you are more useful. So I think it's a decision that people want to make. If somebody says I don't want to be rich, fine. Mm. But you can, can change the dynamics of your life. You can. Mm -hmm. That is that is a decision. Well, wow. It is a decision. And that came up. Yeah. Yeah. Wealth is a decision you make. Wow. I've never thought about it that way. There is one other question. Uh, okay, I'll just pick the question because some of them I don't think they are so relevant. Um, how do we become rich or make a lot of money? Somebody is asking that. Pastor, would you want to answer that? Well, we can skip any question. Well, no, no, no. There is a very simple answer. Uh, if you want to make a lot of money, all right, um, then you discover a product or a service that you can render to humanity, and in exchange for that, they give you um, their material substance to benefit from your product or your service. So the fastest way you can do that is to acquire a skill to a particular level that is rare, and only a few people on the earth have that skill, and it's relevant to the progress of humanity at that given point in time and in that season. And in exchange for that, you are giving um, large sums of money for payment, all right, for that skill. Or the second thing you can do is, therefore, if you don't have that, then you develop the skill of wanting to invest in people that have skills to bring products and services to the marketplace, and your own financial investment is rewarded back onto you, with, which means when they make profit from that, they give you something for the faith that you put into them and the risk you took by giving of your own substance, all right, to further that. So it's either you acquire skill, all right, to do something, or you acquire skill of being an investor to recognize opportunities early enough to be able to spot talents in people, to know who people that have the fundamentals in the right place, that if I put money into this, all right, they are going to succeed. And when they succeed, they measure. But it's always tied up to somebody demonstrating rare skill in bringing out a product and service, which at that particular point in time, in all right, the scheme of things in humanity, there is a demand for that particular thing. And in exchange for that, people will willingly give you um, their material substance. Wow. Pastor, can I take one more question? Yeah. Okay. So I saw one here that's saying, uh, Pastor, why is it that you can't be a billionaire and be very active in church? I don't know what that means. I think... Uh, there are billionaires that I know that are that were active in church. I mean, um, what's that? What's that company in America? Chicken, chick, chick flick, or what's it called? That um, fast food, right? He has been a Sunday school teacher for teaching, I think, from class nine, um, ages nine to eleven, for almost forty-three years every Sunday in his church, and it hasn't affected his commitment, all right, to his church. Okay, and this is where, when we talk about the love of money here, this is where we talk about values. A person who says that my service to God is the primary thing in my life, and I'm not going to compromise my service to God. So that chick flick, um, they don't open on Sundays because he believes that people should go to church on Sundays. People ask him, but a lot of people want to buy this stuff on Sunday. It's a time where family will come and all of that. He said, I'm not going to compromise my values here and my faith in order to make a profit, all right? This is what we're talking about, love of money here. So what happens is, is the love of money that is driving people because if they tell you and you say, listen, I do not, all right, do business meetings on Sundays. I do not do this at this particular point in time. I want to lay this up front, all right? Service to God is something that is priority with me, and therefore I've dedicated this time to serve God. What happens is that people will respect that about you, they respect you a person of integrity because you have shown that in what you are doing. They will know you're a dependable person 
and it will work. Some people will not agree, they will reject you, but people, I know somebody in church who went for an interview, and the person was asked, will you be willing to work on Sundays? The person said, I will not work on Sundays, because I go to church, and they asked the person, so which church do you go to? And he told them a church, and they laughed. And they said, we know your pastor and all of that. That shows that you're a person who will be loyal and faithful to us. And they took the person. So it depends. All right. So this issue of saying I go and make money and I, I, I can't serve God. All right. The fault was already there inside all right, from the beginning. The love of money was there when they didn't have it. That's why I'm saying love of money has nothing to do with whether the money is present or whether it's absent. All right. It's something that is inside um, people. Okay. Wow. Pastor, thank you so much. I think um, we have uh, used up the 15 minutes we have. I, and I just want to say this here. I mean, Muslims yeah. do this. There are Muslims that will not compromise their five times of prayer every day, and they are billionaires. They won't compromise anybody. Uh, there are hotels that are run by Muslims that they will not allow alcohol or allow any form of smoking within those hotels, and those hotels are global brands today. The question is the decision that you make, whether you want to put your integrity and say, this is who I am, this is what I believe, all right, in the land. Wow, I've picked so many Thank things. You very much. Thank you so much, Pastor. I said we can decide to be rich or to be poor, and then you can demonstrate real skills to produce products and services that people can take. There's, there are a lot of things that you have said. I can't even, I can't recap. I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you for the time. And thank you so much. Okay, so oh, I'm just trying to say this. So, um, Lara told you when she's been coming to church, and um, our roots go very deep. So, it's not like uh, any person can call me. I'm just trying yes. to say that <laughs> Lara is heavy in my hands. Oh. So, some viewers might say, Pastor, when you go for my life, oh, she's heavy in my hands. That's why I just want to put it out there. <laughs> but they say, I have life <laughs> shaped. <didn't come. laughs> I've been coming to church in 2007, no. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. Thank you, sir.